In previous episodes, we've had a look at Paul, we've had a look at Thomas, and last time we looked at Peter, the guy who would be revered as the first Pope of Rome. As we mentioned in that last episode, though, he could have been the Bishop of Jerusalem, where Christianity had started off on its journey. But Peter did not become that guy. The job instead went to a man who he and his fellow apostles agreed was worthy of this title. James the Just, the brother of Jesus. Well, I hope you've got yourself a drink ready. If not, go grab one because we've got a bit of stuff to unpack and a couple of questions to ask. The very first question we have to ask is, who the freaking heck is this guy actually? Now that, of course, sounds like a pretty weird question to be asking, uh, but here's the problem. James was a super common name in the first century, like Mary or Joshua or John. If you relate that to today, you might as well call him Dave or Steve or Alan or any other name like that. Surnames were not as big of a thing back then, and folks often took on their genealogy to help identify them, such as Solomon, son of David. However, we do have one qualifier. James was the brother of Jesus. Not that that really helps, because there's at least two other Jameses mentioned in the New Testament at this time, and... Ugh. So who was this guy then? Well, we have got three candidates. James, the son of Zebedee, James, the son of Alphaeus, or James the Less. Well, he's not obviously the son of Zebedee, so that's one of the Jameses out of the way. So that leaves us with two candidates, James the Less and James, son of Alphaeus. And this is where things get a bit muddy, and by a bit, I mean it might as well be buried in a tough mudder contest. So what have scholars had to say about all this? Well, there is the option that James the Less and James the son of Alphaeus could actually be the same guy. After all, James the son of Zebedee had the nickname James the Greater, and the other James could have had the nickname James the Less. So it could be that the two guys are the same guy. Later on, the scholar Jerome would go on to make this claim. However, this does lead into a bit of a problem then, because if this James is the son of Alphaeus, then he's not the son of Joseph. And if he's not the son of Joseph, then he's not the brother of Jesus. Or is he? Of course, over the centuries and years, there have been a few theories and answers posited to answer this question. Now, one answer is that he was a brother of Jesus, uh, but not in the bloodline sense, more as in a spiritual brother of Jesus or as one of his bros, you know, very close friend, that kind of connotation. Another idea is that he was related to Jesus, but not directly. Uh, so some thought he might be Jesus's older stepbrother from Joseph's previous marriage, or perhaps he might be one of his cousins from, say, his mum's side of the family. Now, we do know that Jesus actually did have some brothers, and one of them was called James, and they're brought up in the Gospels. So another idea is that, yes, this particular James was actually Jesus' brother-brother, but much like Paul, he was a later addition to the Apostles, much like Matthias was when he replaced Judas, but he'd been there the whole time. So while James's identity is up in the air and questioned, what we can't dispute is what's been written about him, uh, which is what he was like and his position in the early church. Now, as we saw in the last episode, Peter started off as the de facto leader of the church after Pentecost. But when it came to picking a guy to oversee the Jerusalem church as it started to grow, the job went to James, which was a decision that Peter and all the rest of the guys agreed with. As such, he became an important voice that carried authority. And we do meet him a few times during Paul's travels, as the wandering apostle mentions him when their paths crossed, usually when Paul found himself back in Jerusalem. The portrayal of James in both Paul's letters and in the book of Acts show us that James was very much on the Jewish end of the Christian spectrum. Um, Paul was kind of his opposite as the apostle to the Gentiles or non-Jews, being a bit more chill about following the rules. James is seen handing out regulations to Christians who were Greek, which would satisfy Jewish laws. And he also knows ways that Paul can get out of criticism from fellow Jews. So when Paul visits him that one time, uh, there's lots of rumours about him but James tells him, if you go to the temple and do these offerings, then they can't say that you're going against all of our traditions. 
In his letter to the Galatians, it's kind of revealed by Paul that James's calling is to look after Jewish believers and to bring the message of Jesus to Jewish people. Paul notes that he and some of the other pillars of the early church were okay with him going off and spreading good news to the non-Jewish and actually blessed and allowed him and Barnabas to set off on that first fateful missionary journey just as long as they remembered the basics such as looking after the poor. James of course has got a letter named after him in the New Testament, the Epistle of James. It is quite clearly aimed at Jewish Christians and traditionally James is attributed to having written this. Being in the position of power that he was, he was of course mentioned by church historians who started to write down the history of the church. One such chap called Hegesippus, whose name I've probably just murdered, had a lot of commentaries which were partially preserved by a historian that came after him called Eusebius. And here's a passage telling us why he became known as the Just. James, the brother of the Lord, succeeded to the government of the church in conjunction with the apostles. He has been called the Just by all from the time of our Saviour to the present day, for there were many that bore the name of James. He was holy from his mother's womb, and he drank no wine, nor strong drink, nor did he eat flesh. No razor came upon his head. He did not anoint himself with oil, and he did not use the bath. He alone was permitted to enter into the holy place, for he wore not woolen, but linen garments, and he was in the habit of entering alone into the temple, and was frequently found upon his knees, begging forgiveness for the people, so that his knees became hard like those of a camel, in consequence of his constantly bending them in his worship of God and asking forgiveness for the people. Because of his exceeding great justice, he was called the just, an oblius, which signifies in Greek, bulwark of the people and justice, in according with what the prophets declare concerning him. In this same account, we also learn of the fate of James the Just, although the timing, it's a bit weird. It could be one day or the other. Eusebius writes that shortly after Paul was shipped off to Rome by Festus, the Jews who wanted him dead felt really frustrated as after having their plans ruined. Unfortunately for them, they couldn't appeal to Festus because Festus had just died. Their angry gaze then had to fall on someone else and it fell on the leader of these Christians who were teaching weird things. And so the leader of the Sanhedrin decided to take advantage of the fact that Festus's replacement was still en route. James was seized and dragged before a crowd and ordered to denounce his faith. Now, it's no surprise what his answer was, considering his peers were Peter and Paul. In fact, his speech actually began to convince some of his fellow Jews that he might be onto something with this Jesus thing. Now, just as before with Peter and Paul, this caused them to get a bit upset, and the leader of the Sanhedrin, a chap called Ananus, ordered James's death. He was taken to the top of the temple and thrown off it. Now, seeing that he'd survived, the crowd began to stone him, but this wasn't quick enough for one member of the angry mob, who bought a club and then made James a martyr. He was buried outside of the temple, and a pillar was erected to mark the spot where he lay. And so James' story came to an end. However, the Sanhedrin's victory was a temporary one, as it wasn't long later that the Emperor Vespasian would turn up and ruin everybody's day. However, there are still more of Jesus' disciples to talk about, so stay tuned because next up we're going to be talking about Bartholomew. His story will be in the top card there, so give it a click. If it's not there, best thing to do of course is to subscribe, hit the bell thingy so you know when it arrives. You could of course learn about how the early church formed and that's in the bottom card. Either way, go grab a drink, keep asking questions and I'll see you soon.